Morning. Oh. How did this happen? How did this happen? So say you have a small amount to drink, a light beer let's say. That's pretty well handled because your body uses an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase or ADH to turn it into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde however is even more toxic to the body than alcohol, but it's okay because the body uses another enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase or ALDH to turn it into acetate which the body can then use for energy. So this time let's say you have a couple of beers in a short amount of time. That means more alcohol in the body. The body still uses the ADH pathway but this time it's also going to use the MAOS pathway with an enzyme called CYP2E1. If you drink this much very often, you're going to use the Mayos pathway a lot and so the body actually starts making more CYP2E1. More CYP2E1 means it can process alcohol better and this is how some people build up a tolerance to the effects of alcohol. Acetaldehyde is then converted to acetate but maybe this time it's going to take a little bit longer than last time to get rid of it and so this means acetaldehyde is spending a longer time in the body and having more toxic effects. Now you've gone all out, you've had a bottle of wine, a couple of bottles of beer and half a bottle of vodka. The alcohol in the body is going to be extremely high and the body is going to pull out all stops to get rid of it. It uses the ADH pathway, the MAOS pathway and this time the catalase pathway. Surprisingly though, even with all three of these systems activated, the rate of alcohol conversion is pretty constant in the individual. No amount of coffee, food, chewing gum or breath mints is going to help. The important thing is that we really want to get rid of the acetaldehyde as quickly as possible because it causes damage wherever it's made. So the liver, the pancreas, the digestive tract and we think the brain. The more acetaldehyde around, the more damage is going to be done. And with the constant trickle-in of acetaldehyde, there's going to be a constant stream of damage happening. The amount of alcohol you put into your body is up to you, but the rate at which ADH and ALDH work is basically down to genetics. So if you have a gene that makes heaps of enzymes converting alcohol to acetaldehyde, there's probably going to be a buildup of acetaldehyde and you're probably going to be feeling terrible tomorrow. If you have a gene that doesn't make much ALDH, this limits how quickly the body can process the toxic acetaldehyde and you're probably going to feel terrible tomorrow. If you drink heaps of alcohol in one go and have a constant flow of acetaldehyde through your system, you're probably going to feel terrible tomorrow. So summing up, though there are other factors involved, you probably drank too much alcohol or you don't have the genetics to deal with the amount of alcohol that you drank. I do. <laughs>